early evening. Uh, my name is Sophia and I'm a volunteer for the Atlanta Artist Emergency Relief Group. Uh, we have an extension of the volunteer team that is just for uh, little ones, for child care and entertainment for little ones, and just helping out the parent artists in this group. So we have a couple of folks who are going to come on here uh, and do story time. I think every day is the goal, at least every weekday. And then hopefully these videos will be able to be uh, saved and then replayed uh, for however long we are in quarantine. Uh, I have a little, a little, little one at home, a 16 month old at home. So today's story time is going to be tailored to the itty bitties, uh, preschool and toddlers for sure. So uh, the theme for today is going to be animals. So I have three animal books here. Let's get started. Okay, we have Old MacDonald Had a Farm with our little cow friend. Say, Old MacDonald Had a Farm. E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm, he had some cows. E-I-E-I-O. <sighs> With a moo moo here and a moo moo there. Here a moo. There a moo. Everywhere a moo moo. Let's see if we can count these cows on this page. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cows. Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. The end. Yay! Hopefully for our little itty bitties that were watching that one, that was fun. <laughs> All right, similar vein, Peekaboo Farm, let's go. Who's hiding pig? Somewhere on the farm, there's a black and white friend sleeping inside a barn. Who could that be? <gasps> Hello, it's Cow. Who's hiding pig? Tell me, can you see a fluffy, woolly little one who looks a lot like me? Let's see. Hello, it's sheep. Who's hiding pig? Take a good look around. There's a feathered friend bobbing up and down. Hello, it's duck. Who's hiding pig? Something sounds quite gruff. It's coming from behind the gate. Who's that saying rough? Hello, it's dog. All right, who's hiding pig? Tell me, can you spot a rather hungry animal that likes to eat a lot? Let's see. Hello, it's goat. Okay, my daughter ripped the next page, so I'm gonna cover it up. <laughs> Who's hiding pig? What's that purring sound? There's a stripey animal somewhere to be found. Hello, it's cat. Sorry about that. <laughs> Who's hiding pig? They love to eat sweet hay, playing with the butterflies, and happily they may. Who's hiding under there? Hello, it's horse. Who's hiding, pig? They've made a special nest safe inside a cozy coop with a mother who knows best. It's hen. Now who's hiding, pig? Let's all take a peek. Behind the sack of grains, who made that little squeak? Hello, it's mouse. And last one, who's hiding pig? Who else could there be? Open the door and take a look. Are you ready? One, two, three. It's your family, the little piggy family. The end. Okay, last one. This one is a little longer. It'll be hopefully a little bit more entertaining. We have a classic Winnie the Pooh. Dust here. Here we go. 
Like most small boys, Christopher Robin had toy animals to play with, and they all lived together in a wonderful world of make-believe. His best friend was a bear called Winnie the Pooh, or Pooh for short. Now, Pooh had some very unusual adventures, and they all happened deep in the Hundred Acre Wood, where Christopher Robin played. It was the enchanted neighborhood of Christopher Robin's childhood. Winnie the Pooh lived in the Hundred Acre Wood all by himself under the name of Sanders, which meant he had the name over the door in gold letters, and he lived under it. One day, when Pooh was sitting by the fire warming his hands, he heard his clock strike. When he heard that sound, he knew it was time for something. But what could it be? Since he was a bear of very little brain, he had to think about it in the most thoughtful way he could. Oh, yes, he said at last, getting to his feet. Time for my stoutness exercises. And he stood before his mirror and began to touch his toes. And he straightened up and sang a little song. When I up down and touch the ground it puts me in the mood up down and touch the ground in the mood for food and i am stout round and i have found speaking poundage wise i improve my appetite oh when i exercise after finishing his exercises Pooh wondered what to do next it was about 11 o'clock in the morning, just the time for something sweet. So he went to his cupboard and took down a jar of honey. But the jar was empty. Oh, what, said Pooh, there's only a little left. And he pushed his face deep into the honey pot so he could lick the last bit. While he had the honey pot over his face, a bee flew in the window and buzzed past Pooh's ear. That buzzing noise means something, said the bear. The only reason for making a buzzing noise that I know of is because you're a bee. He pulled the pot off his face and watched the bee fly out the window. And the only reason for being a bee is to make honey. Pooh followed the bee outdoors and watched it fly into a hole in a nearby tree. And the only reason for making honey is so I can eat it. Eagerly, Pooh headed for the tree and started to climb. He climbed and he climbed and he climbed. And as he climbed, he hummed a little hum to cheer himself up. The climb was getting harder and harder. And Pooh was swinging dangerously on a very thin branch. Crack! Whoa, help, said Pooh, as he dropped to the branch below. If only I hadn't, you see what I meant to do, he said, bumping from branch to branch. It all comes, I suppose, from, he sighed as he flew gracefully into a prickly bush, from liking honey so much, woof, oh, bother. He crawled out of the bush, brushed the prickles from his nose, and sat down to think again. And the first person he thought of was Christopher Robin. So Winnie the Pooh went to see his friend Christopher Robin, who lived in a tree trunk in another part of the forest where he could be near his friends and help them. Christopher had just finished nailing on Eeyore's tail. The donkey, who was forever losing his tail, looked at it gloomily. Thanks, he said. It's not much of a tail, but I'm sort of attached to it. Just then, who arrived. Good morning, Christopher Robin, he called. Good morning, Pooh, said Christopher Robin. If it is a good morning, said Eeyore, which I doubt, and he jogged off because he was struggling with coronavirus. Pooh looked at the toys in front of Christopher's house. I just said to myself coming along, I wonder if Christopher Robin has such a thing as a balloon about him. I just said it to myself while thinking of balloons and wondering. Well, what do you want a balloon for? asked Christopher Robin as he untied a blue balloon. Winnie the Pooh looked carefully in all directions to be sure that no one was listening. Oh dear, I've lost my place. <laughs> what do you want a balloon for? asked Christopher Robin as he untied a blue balloon. Winnie the Pooh looked carefully in all directions to be sure that no one was listening. 
Then he put his paw near his mouth and growled in a deep whisper, Honey, but you don't get honey with a balloon. I do, said Pooh. How, asked Christopher, handing him the string of the balloon. I shall fly like a bee up to the honey tree, see? And Pooh floated up in the air with the balloon. Christopher caught him just in time. Oh, Pooh, you can't fool the bees that way. Wait and see, said Pooh. He went to a very muddy place that he knew of and rolled and rolled in the mud until he was black all over. Now, he explained, I'll be a little black rain cloud under the sky blue balloon. Christopher Robin smiled at Pooh affectionately. Ah, silly old bear, he said. They walked over to the honey tree together, Pooh holding on to the balloon and Christopher Robin holding on to Pooh. Pooh pointed up at the hole and asked Christopher to aim him at the bees. Christopher gave the bear a little lift in the right direction, let go suddenly, and there was Pooh Bear floating gracefully up into the sky, level with the bee's nest, but about 20 feet away from it. Hooray, Christopher Robin shouted. How do I look? Pooh called down. You look like a chubby bear holding on to the string of a balloon, said Christopher. Careful, Pooh, hold on tight. I'm only a little black rain cloud, Pooh sang. Pay no attention to me. Pooh Bear floated closer to the hole and reached a paw in for some honey. A bee flew out and buzzed around his nose. Christopher Robin, Pooh called. I think the bees suspect something. Go home and get your umbrella and walk around saying, tut tut, it looks like rain. I think it would help fool the bees. Christopher returned with his umbrella and Pooh sang a little cloud song, such as a rain cloud might sing. But the bees were buzzing more suspiciously than ever. Some flew out of their nest and gathered round and round the cloud as it began the second verse of its song. One bee even sat down on the cloud's nose. Then a swarm of angry bees attacked the balloon. It began to lose air and Winnie the Pooh floated slowly down toward the ground. Christopher Robin, Pooh called. Oh, bother, I think I shall come down. But Christopher caught him before he could hit the ground. Using the umbrella as a shield, they splashed across a mud pond, leaving the angry bees behind. I've been thinking, Christopher Robin, said Pooh, as they uh, sloshed across the pond, and I have come to a very important decision. Christopher Robin, you never can tell with bees. The end. That's the end of that one. Well, thank you for watching. Hopefully we had some itty bitties that were tuning in. Uh, and if you couldn't catch it live, I'm sure someone in our group will be able to figure out how to save it um, so that uh, little ones can access it later. If not, we'll re-record and post it on YouTube. Uh, everybody stay safe, stay well, be healthy. Wishing you all the best. Have a good night.